Here in number 38, we have the dreaded equivalence point titration problem. Okay. Where we have a weak acid reacting with a strong base. So I've written this reaction out here. When you have something strong and something weak, the strong thing is going to, this is a little inappropriate, but the strong thing is going to F up the weak thing. And so we'll need an ICF table. Okay. And so if we have an ICF table, we need to work in terms of moles. So we'll have to combine the concentrations with the volumes to get moles. So here they tell us we have 50 mils, which is 0 0.05 liters of our acid. They tell us that it is 0 0.3 molar. So we'll have 0 0.3 moles in a liter, and that ends up being 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. Okay, And we can use that same logic to get our hydroxide moles. Or, I'm sorry, that's not true. Okay, so let's just mark our moles here. So, for the hydroxide, we're going to add as much NaOH as it takes so that our moles of hydroxide are equal to our moles of the acid. And so we're going to make it so that we add 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. Okay. And so that's what the equivalence point is all about, equal moles of acid and base. And so both of these will get completely used up. Okay, so both of them will get completely used up. But now over here, we didn't start with any of our conjugate base. But now we're going to make 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of it. Okay, so eventually we're going to have to take our conjugate base and use it in an ice table. But in order to do that, we're going to need its concentration. So we're going to need to figure out what our total volume is by thinking about what volume of NaOH we actually added. So we know we had to add 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of the NaOH to reach the equivalence point. And we know that we get out one liter for every 0.15 moles from the molarity. And so we added 0.1 liters or 100 mils. Okay, so that combined with our initial 50 mils gives us our final volume of 150 mils. Okay, so our concentration of the NO2 minus is going to be equal to the 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 moles divided by the 0.15 liters. Giving us a concentration of 0.1 molar NO2 minus. And so that's all we're left with in our beaker.
but we know that this is a conjugate base and can go on to affect the pH on its own. So to think about how that works out, we'll need to do an ice table for the NO2 minus. So I'm going to erase our ICF table. And now write the base hydrolysis equation. NO2 minus with water will form HNO2 and hydroxide. Okay, so if we can figure out the concentration of hydroxide at equilibrium, then we have a link to pH. So we can go ahead and ice it out. So we have 0.1 molar NO2 to begin. Minus x, 0.1 minus x. Start with 0 initially. Plus x, plus x. Okay, and we have a base hydrolysis, so we would want a KB to plug into. But in the problem, they don't give us KB, they give us KA. So we're going to have to go ahead and use that relationship between KW and KA and KB. So you know that KW is equal to KA times KB. KB will be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by the KA of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4. giving us a KB of 2.22 times 10 to the negative 11. And then we can use that with the E line from our ACE table. Okay, so that value is equal to X squared over 0.1 minus X. We can get rid of the minus x, multiply the point 1 over, take the square root to find that x is equal to 1.49 times 10 to the negative 6. And this X is going to be equal to the concentration of hydroxide ions. So if we take the negative log of that value, we'll get our pOH, which is equal to 5.83. But we don't want pOH, we want pH. So we'll do 14 minus 5.83. And with a little bit of rounding, you get 8.2 as your pH, which is equal to D. Okay, so these problems are long, and it's a lot of organizing your information. So try to do this again on your own and make sure you can get to the answer, too, without watching the video at all. Okay, and it can also help to remember that the equivalence point of a titration with a weak acid and a strong base will be greater than 7. So hopefully you could eliminate A and B 
from the beginning. 39 is asking us about an electrolytic cell. And it has some lead chloride in it. And they tell us it's aqueous. So what I like to do is just go through and write out each of the species present in my cell. And then we know that we want to think about what's being produced at the cathode. And we know, thanks to our red cat, that reduction happens at the cathode. So we can go ahead and think about the reduction half reactions that could happen. So for lead, we could add two electrons to form lead solid. Seems pretty likely. Chlorine, you could add an electron to form chlorine 2 minus. And hopefully that's uncomfortable for you. That doesn't really seem like it should make sense because it doesn't. And if you were to look on the table for the potential for this, you wouldn't find it. Okay, so I've written the half reaction for water on there for the reduction of water. And so if we want to figure out which will happen, we want to look at the table and compare their reduction potentials. So for lead, 2 plus to lead solid is a potential of negative 0.126 volts. And for water, it's negative 0.83 volts. So the more positive value is more favorable. So the lead reduction is what's going to happen. And so we'll form the lead solid at the cathode. So here we're looking at a nickel complex and they give us the crystal field splitting energy as 210 kilojoules per mole. They want us to figure out what color this appears. So this energy delta that they're reporting is the difference in energy between those d orbitals. And with color we think about wavelength, so we want to relate energy and wavelength. And we can use the equation E equals HC over lambda to do that. The thing is, is that we think of this equation as popping out an energy in terms of joules per photon. And the energy we were given was in kilojoules per mole. So we'll have to do some dimensional analysis to get it into the proper units. So we know that there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule and we know that in one mole there should be Avogadro's number of photons okay so then we'll get the energy in terms of joules per photon These usually pop out as 10 to the minus 19 for visible colors. And this is 3.49 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per photon. So then we can use that energy in our E equals HC over lambda equation to solve for lambda. H and C are constants, and those are on the data sheet. And 
Maybe you remember them still from 110. So we have Planck's constant and the speed of light. divided by lambda. And so with a little arithmetic, you can find that the wavelength that's absorbed is going to be equal to 570 nanometers. And you can use the color wheel on your data sheet to see that this is yellow. That's a yellow photon. So yellow light is absorbed. So if that's what's absorbed, we're going to see its complement. So we see purple. So don't forget to pay attention to whether they're asking for the wavelength or color absorbed or what we ob observe. Okay. So the answer here is E purple. And then that's the end. So great work. I hope you guys all are really successful on your finals. Don't forget to take care of yourselves as you're studying. Sleep and eat enough. Okay. And if you need to get in touch with me again, you can do so at this email and I hope that you guys are really successful on your journeys beyond Chem 112. It's been really great to work with you all and um, it's my first time in Chem 112 land so thanks for being really great patient um, students with me through that. Okay so have a great summer. <laughs>